Zion family, and welcome to this week's Tuesday music segment. Gregorian chant. It's graceful, simple, sweet, elegant, undeniably beautiful, and completely inoffensive. Until the mid to late Middle Ages, it was the official music of the church. So why do people hate it so much now? How could a genre that inspired and dominated for hundreds of years be completely rejected hundreds of years later? Well, I thought we'd explore that question today because I believe that there are four main reasons why we just don't rock out to this in our cars anymore and why we rarely use it in church. So before we start, I want to um, get some terminology down. Uh, we're going to use the term plain chant from now on because that is more accurate. Um, even though we refer to pretty much all of this genre now as Gregorian chant, Gregorian chant actually refers to one specific uh, type of chant and from one specific era of the Middle Ages. So we're going to um, refer to it as plain chant. So what is plain chant exactly? Plain chant is one sung line with no accompaniment. Um, one, one line, one melody, no accompaniment at all. No harmony, just one single line. So when I would play this for my class when I was still teaching, probably a vast majority of my students would come up with this reaction. Look, it's, it's pretty, it's calming, but it's just boring. I would play a, a plain chant for them and probably about the minute and a half, two minute mark, they're like, I could see them kind of sighing and they'd be like, all right, we're, we're done, we're out, we need something else. So why, why is that? Why does the modern audience find this boring? So let's explore. Um, the, first, the first characteristic I wanna look at is the actual melody. What musical material we have here. Uh, for this, I want to uh, play for you a little bit of one of the most famous plain chants. This is a beautiful piece by the brilliant polymath Hildegard of Bingen. And this is Alleluia, O Virga Mediatrix. So let's listen to this melody together. Now, a few things to notice right off the bat. The melody is very stepwise. It doesn't have a lot of leaps. The notes are very close together. Um, it has a narrow vocal range. In other words, the composer sort of uses the same set of notes over and over again in that one line. It is melismatic, which means it has multiple notes for one syllable of text. It is trance-like and graceful, as I mentioned. Um, in, in plain chant, steps or uh, big leaps in music and high notes were reserved for only the most important of text moments. So let's leap ahead to uh, about the minute eight mark and listen for the word sancta. So Hildegard uses sancta. That was a pretty big leap for this music and a pretty high note uh, compared to the rest of it. Now, they used leaps and high notes at important moments in the text. This was a signal to the congregation, hey, pay attention, this particular note, this particular word is important. And in this case, the word sancta meaning sacred. That's a very powerful word in the church. That is an important word. So Hildegard wrote this stepwise or this leap here and also wrote a high note so that it was your signal pay attention so that melodic line um i think one of the main reasons why the modern audience doesn't um doesn't really embrace this anymore is the melody is extremely complex 
And the modern ear likes catchy melodies. We like to hear something that we can hear once and then recognize it the next time we hear it. You know, we want to hear something on the radio and then when we hear it in the store, we're like, oh, we know that song. That's not going to happen with plain chant. You're not going to hear Alleluia, O Virga Mediatrix and then hear it on the radio and go, oh, oh, I recognize that. That's Alleluia, O Virga Mediatrix. I mean, I would because I've heard this a million times, but if you're hearing it for the first time, it's not catchy. You're just not going to grasp that. Modern audiences love a catchy tune, and this just isn't it. And it's very difficult to sing along to. Um, now, the reason number two that I think modern audiences do not embrace plain chant is the fact that it is, by definition, plain. And what I mean by that is the texture is plain. It is monophonic, meaning there is one melodic line no accompaniment, no instruments with it, no harmony, no counterpoint, just mono, just monophony, just one line, nothing above, nothing below. We are just used to music that has more textures. Even the a cappella music we listen to has, you know, beautiful, rich, dense harmonies. This has no harmony. All of the complexity of this music is in the melodic line. It's in those waves and curves, all of those notes together, all of those melismas but there is nothing above, nothing below. And that, to our ears, is boring. Um, now, the third reason why I think uh, modern audiences don't, uh, don't prefer plain chant, let's go back to the beginning of Hildegard's piece here, um, and I want you to notice something. As you're listening, I want you to try to tap your foot to it. Or clap or snap. Nope. Try to dance to it. Nope. Good luck. So, why? Plain chant was non metric. Our music, ex with very, very few exceptions, has what's known as meter. Meter is this. Um, this repeating pattern of counts. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. This train is bound for glory, this train, you know, or threes. Amazing grace, how sweet. Plain chant has no meter. There is no repeating pattern of counts. There are no measures. There are no measure markers. It has no, it, it, it has no repeating pulse to it. This was done on purpose. The church actually forbade music to be metric. Why? Because when you listen to a piece that has meter, when you listen to a piece that has a repeating rhythmic pattern, your body gets involved. You tap your foot, you know, you're kind of, you're snapping your fingers. Even if you're not physically doing that, on the inside you're going, mm, 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 mm. The church believed that worship music should be of the mind, and of the spirit. They did not want the body involved in worship. So music with meter gets your body involved. Music without meter is an exercise of the mind and spirit only. That's what they believed. So they banned metric music. And I think the fourth reason why um, why plain chant maybe isn't, uh, isn't as popular as, as it once was is because uh, plain chant is modal. Um, our music the vast majority of, of our music is based on the major and minor scales. Um, even if you don't know what this is in your mind and in your ear, you would recognize these scales, the major and minor scales, the do, re, mi, and the la, do, mi scales. Um, and uh, plain chant uses modes. Modes are different scale patterns, although two of them evolved into the major and minor scale, but I'll get into that in another lecture. So some of this music, because it's using a different set of notes than the major and minor scale patterns, would f sound a little bit foreign to our ears. Uh, modal music just behaves differently than major and minor, or diatonic music as we call it. Um, and so I think that's probably one of the main reasons, you know, one of the four main reasons why we reject it. Uh, now we do have modes in our music here and there. Uh, jazz uses a lot of modes, for example, um, and there are actually some rock composers that'll sneak modes into their music, uh, David Bowie being one of them. Um, so as we got into the later Middle Ages, um, 
plain chant evolved into a genre called the organum, and the organum is the earliest version of what is known as polyphony, which means more than one line happening at the same time. What they did was they took plain chant and then they added this low held bass line underneath. It's actually rather beautiful. I would highly recommend checking out some organum if you get a chance, uh, particularly by the um, composer Leonin. Um, so then music just continued to evolve from there until we got into some very complex polyphony in the Renaissance era. And I'll be happy to cover that in a later, uh, like in a later session, if anybody would be, uh, would be interested. But that's my theory on why no one rocks out to Gregorian chant in their cars anymore. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. If there's a topic that you would like me to cover in the future, please let me know. Um, but I would encourage you to thank God every day for the beautiful music we've been given and the evolution of music and um, enjoy all of the genres that are out there to offer. And please do check out some plain chant. It, it is undeniably beautiful and quite relaxing. So uh, don't reject it outright, but um, yeah, give, it, give it a try. Give it a listen. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you next Tuesday.